So my research interests are fairly broad, but they fall into roughly two camps. Uh, on the one hand, I'm, um, I'm interested in the brain mechanisms of attention and working memory, and that, that would uh, qualify as my cognitive neuroscience research. But I'm also interested in the role of those cognitive functions in real world uh, applications such as tra uh, transportation and in military uh, command and control. So uh, let me give you an uh, example of a couple of projects in those two areas. Uh, we are using EEG and fMRI to try and understand the neural mechanisms of spatial attention. Um, more importantly, we're also interested in individual differences in attention and working memory. And uh, there are a number of different sources uh, of individual differences, ex including development experience, but genetics is uh, another major contributor to how people differ in um, whether they are very good at attention or have very good memories or are excellent problem solvers, etc. So we, in the, in the last uh, decade, we've capitalized on the findings of the Human Genome Project, which have allowed us to specify not only the entire human genome, but also the variants, which are called uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, between people. So in our program of research, what we do is we genotype um, healthy young individuals for different variants of genes related to neurotransmitters in the brain, particularly acetylcholine and dopamine, which have been linked to attention and working memory. Uh, and um, we're particularly interested in, in, sh in trying to see whether, uh, for example, people who have high spatial working memory capacity, whether their performance can be linked to specific genes. And we have been successful. We've shown, for example, that a specific gene called the DBH gene, which controls the conversion of dopamine to norepinephrine, is significantly associated with uh, working memory capacity. We're also interested in the applications of these findings. So we've tried to see whether uh, decision making in military command and control, uh, speeded decision making when you have to uh, make fast decisions about uh, which enemies to engage, how, what units to send, is also related to this uh, gene, and we've also been successful in doing that. So that's an example of my, my human factors work. Um, in other areas, we're particularly interested in seeing, uh, as you might know, uh, in the area both in, in civilian and in, in military applications, there are increased use of what are called unmanned vehicles. These are robots that fly autonomously or, or go on the ground autonomously for example, after the uh, September, 11, uh, September 11th attacks at the World Trade Center, these robots were sent to look for victims uh, who, might, who might have survived the attack in the rubble because it was too hazardous to send individuals. Similarly, uh, we have um, aircraft that fly uh, autonomously in, in search and rescue operations, as in Katrina and also in military operations. The operators of these uh, UAVs and UGVs are usually uh, uh, working under very high task load. Uh, and so we are exploring the use of intelligent computer automation to relieve their, um, their task load. And we're also using physiological measures to, to objectively uh, measure that, that task load. So that's an example of where we're trying to use physiological measures to uh, measure the state of the operator. And then if they're overloaded, as indicated by those measures, EEG and others, uh, to provide them with computer aiding so that they can do better do their job. So that's an example of my human factors research.